Welcome into this week's Degrees of Science. Today we're talking about a cool opportunity you have to make observations during the total solar eclipse to help out scientists all over the world. Today we're talking with Holly Cole. She's with NASA and the Observer, or Globe Observer app that they have there. Holly, first of all, thanks for joining us. Can you tell us, y'all's Globe app is much more than just eclipse. What, what can people see and do inside of that app? Sure, first, thank you for having me here today. Um, Globe Observer is the app of the Globe program, and it's a way for volunteers to provide Earth science data in support of NASA Earth Science and Earth System Science broadly. So there are four things you can do inside the Globe Observer app. You can observe clouds, you can observe um, mosquito habitats, you can observe land cover, which is just what's on the land, and you can observe tree height. And all of those are really kind of critical baseline observations for understanding climate issues and Earth processes. So um, with Eclipse, we take what you're doing already for clouds, which is just telling us what's in the sky and taking pictures of the sky. Um, and we, we expand that to say, well, what's happening when the sun isn't around? Uh, what's changing in the sky? Can you report that to us? So in, in your app, as we get closer to the event, that, that eclipse tab will start to pop up. What kind of observations mm -hmm. are you wanting people to make during the total solar eclipse? So during the total solar eclipse, there are two things that you'll do. First, you'll be taking pictures of clouds every 30 to 15 minutes, depending on how close we are to totality. And um, you'll be reporting what kinds of clouds are in the sky and how those clouds are changing. The second thing you'll do is you'll get an air thermometer and you'll measure the temperature every 10 minutes and then as we get closer every five minutes and report how the temperature is changing. And we would love for you to do that an hour before the eclipse starts and an hour after it starts. It's a great thing to do, you know, stay in place, wait for the traffic to die down a little bit where you are and just, just continue collecting that data. So what kind of temperature changes do we see when the, when the sun's blocked during that uh, total solar eclipse yeah. time? You know, it, it varies depending on where you are and what conditions you're in. Um, it will vary based on cloud cover. So if you have a lot of clouds and you're in a more humid environment, you're not going to see as much of a temperature drop as somebody that is in a dry and clear environment. Um, we did see in 2017 uh, as much as a, as a 30 degree drop in some locations, and some of those locations were actually kind of humid, so that surprised us a bit. So, you know, you, you could see quite a bit or you could see just a little bit, and that will be an interesting experiment to see what happens. So you were talking about doing it during the 2017 event. How cool is it to have something like that where you get an observation that surprises you and you actually learn a little bit through these observations? Well, I think it's really exciting. I remember when we got, um, during the October annular eclipse where the temperature actually rose a little bit and we were really puzzled as to why that happened. Um, we're still not quite sure why. But I think that's really interesting because it's those outlier surprises that tell you new things about the atmosphere that maybe you weren't expecting to have happen. So that's why we need as many people as possible participating. Um, so we get as much data as possible and some of those maybe unusual unexpected things might, might show up. Why is it so important during a total eclipse or solar eclipse like this to, to measure temperatures and figure out the changes that it's causing for us? We are using this as, as a bit of a natural experiment. As Earth scientists, you don't get the chance to take pieces away. You, know, you just have to live with what you've got. But during an eclipse, you kind of get to take the sun out of the picture for a few minutes and you can see what impact that has on atmospheric processes. And that's kind of exciting. Um, so this time around, we are looking at um, how those temperature shifts change regionally and how climatic regions, so, you know, southwest versus southeast and, and dry versus humid uh, versus cool versus hot, you know, how those things influence the amount of change you experience when you lose that solar energy. So um, that information is, is really interesting in terms of helping us understand bigger processes and giving some insight into how temperature changes, broadly speaking, um, such as climatic temperature changes, uh, climate change temperature um, changes, are, are working. So it's, it's a nice little, little experiment 
to provide some insight into temp changing temperatures in different regions. One of the observations you have people do is the cloud coverage with that temperature drop or dip when an eclipse goes, how does that impact the potential cloud coverage while an eclipse is going on? Yeah, so what what people have seen in the past is that you get the, the puffy clouds tend to flatten out and dissipate. And the reason for that is those puffy cumulus clouds are convective, which means they form from solar heating. So the sun heats up the ground and you start to see them kind of in the, uh, you know, the air rises and they, and they, um, and then it condenses into clouds. And you start to see those kinds of clouds develop as the day goes on. And those kinds of puffy clouds that are being directly fueled by solar energy, those are the ones that tend to flatten out and go away, which is a great, great thing if you're trying to watch an eclipse and you have a lot of those puffy clouds around, because they, they may go away for you. As many clouds as we can get to go away, I would be perfectly right. happy. Having it in April moving through Texas sometimes gets us a little bit worried on stuff like that. So are you wanting observations just for people that are in the path of totality, or do you want anyone that's impacted even by the partial eclipse? We want observations from everywhere. So even if you are in a place that isn't experiencing any eclipse at all, we want those, those observations as well. And the reason for that is we want some comparison data. We want that data right in totality. We want that data a little outside. We want it way outside, maybe on the edge of the path, and then way, way, way outside where you're not getting anything at all. And it would be nice to have that comparison across the climatic regions so that we can kind of start to see what is related to the eclipse and maybe what other patterns were going on that day anyway. So how, how are these observations from citizen scientists that are using your app, how will that data be helpful for uh, other scientists all across the world? Sure, so first of all, Globe uh, makes all its data available in an open database. So anybody can go get it and anybody can go do research. And one thing that we're setting up right now is that um, we are setting up uh, student internships so that um, high school and college students can be mentored by NASA scientists to study these temperature changes and these cloud changes using your eclipse data and do some really interesting research. And these students are phenomenal. So you're contributing to that science education. Beyond that, we do have a couple of scientists um, who are kind of queued up and ready to go to study how um, the variation in the temperature changes. Um, and, and compared that to the changes in cloud cover and the existing cloud cover. We did this in 2017, and um, the paper that was published about it is on the Observer website, so you can take a look at it. And some of the interesting things that we found then was this, this variation in how much the temperature changed based on cloud cover. And the other interesting thing we saw was our first time using citizen science volunteer collected data um, to do this kind of work, and we saw that the volunteer observations were really, really valuable because they were in a place where we didn't have data. So you're providing data points that maybe we don't have. There isn't an existing weather station at that site or um, just that volume of data um, at that location. And so you're giving us extra data that will help provide some insights and during a really interesting phenomenon. So we're, we're this time looking at the, the climate zones and how that impacts the, the temperature change. And who knows, maybe we'll find other surprises too as we start to go through the data. Yeah, so your program, Globe Observer. So I, I was on your website and really was cool. I found y'all's uh, little journal that you have that you can do. Yeah. So if someone, maybe younger kids or school, want them out there, tell us about that journal where they can kind of log everything that's going on uh, during the eclipse. Yeah, so one thing we found in past eclipses is that it's really fun to use the app but it can be distracting and it can be maybe challenging, especially for younger students or groups. And so we wanted to have a place where people could reflect on their experience, maybe share some additional observations that they made that weren't part of the app itself. So maybe Before they want to talk about the eclipse, shadows and how the shadows changed or animal behavior. And they're, you know, they're listening to the crickets start singing and they want to talk about, well, I noticed that this you know, at 50% at, uh, eclipse, I started hearing crickets. Um, and that's a place for you to record all those kinds of observations and reflect on your experience both during and after the fact. The cool thing about the Eclipse Journal is that we're collecting those observations from students 
and they'll have a chance to write up their experience and share it in a student publication, a, a national journal of student eclipse experiences. So we're really excited to see what we get from this. We haven't done it before, uh, but we're, we're excited to see how that comes out. So, you know, the word excitement always seems to be coming up with the eclipse. Yes. I have not personally been able to be in a total eclipse. For some of us that haven't, I, I know you were in the 2017 one. W what is it like when it goes to totality? It is unlike anything I have ever experienced before. It is, the word that comes to mind is awesome. And I feel like that word is overused a bit, but it truly is an awe inspiring experience. When you're in that shadow, um, it's a deeply emotional experience and, and it's a little overwhelming. Um, and in fact, for us, we, we ask you to stop collecting data during totality take your sun your solar glasses off you don't need them the sun is fully blocked at that point if if you are in totality and only if you are in totality um and just just enjoy it look around and and feel it um it's it's more emotional than you might expect uh, holly thank you for taking some time to talk with us again your globe app is awesome we've had previous interviews about all the different features but i think this eclipse one is really uh, helpful so thanks for taking some time to talk with us thanks for inviting me